Um, my remit is to present to you some information about immune function. And um, if there was ever a misunderstood subject, it probably is immune function and what its relationship may be to immune senescence and anti-aging. So I'm really going to talk to you about immune modulation and really general biodefenses in the context of what we can use therapeutically in the more natural arena to perhaps manage some of these very challenging problems with immune function uh, that face the general population. And this is a very, very important topic for us to review today. So when we're talking about immunotherapeutics, it, it really brings up a lot of disciplines of the area of therapeutics. And I'm impressed at how many people know about individual supplements, but very and decidedly unimpressed at the knowledge that exists in how to apply the supplements effectively. And this is really the discipline of therapeutics. And um, I'm actually a trained clinical pharmacologist, and much of my work uh, in my professional career was actually on drug development. So I tend to look at natural products in terms of an evidence base, and I tend to take a more classic approach at looking at these products from a position of pharmacognosy. Well, what we have in immunotherapeutics is obviously prevention and disease treatment strategy. Um, a lot of conventional medicine uh, veers towards the immunosuppression, uh, especially when we're looking at diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. Um, but, of course, there are agents that we're using that are biological, that are prescription drugs that really are natural products. And then we're looking increasingly and have been for many years at helper effects of antiviral drugs. Um, we have a decided problem with antiviral drugs. They're almost like tossing a coin. They're about 50% effective at most in most circumstances. But we now have approaches that are rather innovative where we look at immune modulation and add to it helper mechanisms like antiviral effects and even adding things like anti-angiogenic therapies for example, in chemotherapy or approaches to the, the treatment of advanced cancer where anti-angiogenic treatments may be combined with immune stimulatory or immodulatory treatments. So we're seeing really an expansion uh, of helper type compounds that we're using in immunology. Now there's a lot uh, to go through here, but I'd like to give you a primer of immune function and indicate to you the obvious that's not so obvious. This is a terribly complex harmony of, harmony of events, and it involves the interaction of immune-competent cells and their messenger molecules with most body structures and functions. So this really, from a logical perspective, indicates something to you. Who can be so naive enough to believe that single drug receptor interactions can really have that great an effect on such a comple complex cascade of immune events. But research has underscored now the importance of not just talking about immunity in terms of up or down regulation, but looking at the direction and quality of the immune response. And this is specifically relevant to autoimmunity and more relevant to aging, where in fact, as you all know, immunosenescence is associated with the development of autoantibodies uh, to uh, self-antigens. Now, you'll see that alternative medicine, call it what one will, integrative medicine, and if you go down to the exhibit hall, you'll see people that are obsessed about the role of natural killer cell function in disease management. I use the word obsession because natural killer cells, they're important little beasties, but they're not what immunity's all about. Of course, for those of you who have forgotten a little bit of basic immunology. These are large granular lymphocytes that really don't hook up on antigens. They recognize cells that are infected by viruses or certain tumor cells that don't express MHC, major histocompatibility antigens, on their cell surface. And they can actually 
directly kill these cells by injection of perforins and granzymes or proteolytic enzymes inducing cell death or apoptosis, hence the name killer cells. They have somewhat of a complex role. They're important, certainly, in immune surveillance. But there's a lot more to immunity than merely talking about natural killer cells. There's a lot more to immunity than the simplistic notion that you need to upregulate immunity in the presence of immune senescence. In fact, arguably, upregulating up immunity in the presence of autoimmunity is quite damaging. So I'd like you to just think about the idea of modulation rather than simplistically low immune function or high immune function. Now, what the issue is, is that natural killer cell, and I apologize for the spelling error, is used as a key platform to promote the sale of dietary supplements and immune-stimulating dietary supplements or nutraceuticals. And please understand that uh, this platform is a very limited platform. Now, I talk about immune housekeeping, and I like to look at the immune system in what I think is an innovative conceptual way, looking at it having cognitive function, where it recognize, recognizes differences or intrusions, it makes decisions and takes actions. Um, and what we have really with immune function is the possibility of using antiviral compounds, as I mentioned, anti-angiogenic agents, and other complementary approaches that in fact are for one of better terminology, immune helpers. Let me explain. These are the cells of the immune system, and without boring you, uh, you can see that uh, it's a fairly complex series of white cells and immunocompetent cells originating in the bone marrow and thymus, and of course the thymus involutes with age, which is one key issue in immunosenescence that we'll discuss in a little more detail. And let's just look at immune deficiency because this is really where much of our thought is in clinical practice. And primary immune deficiency is relatively uncommon. These are the congenital diseases variably affecting T or B cell function. Of course, B cell function really being antibody function and T cell function simplistically being cell-mediated immunity. But of course, we have other mechanisms of immune functional biodefense such as phagocytosis or a whole series of complement pathways or chemical messenger molecules, cytokines, interleukins, etc. Where we're focused often clinically is looking at secondary deficiency of immune function and of course the archetypical disease of immune deficiency is AIDS and those are people who believe that's due to a simple viral infection um, may be wrong. And this is certainly a heterogeneous disorder, but I can't go into that in too much detail today. Um, we certainly have chronic viral infections that are affecting immunity. Uh, we clearly have malnutrition, and please understand the kind of malnutrition we're dealing with in the U.S. is probably hypernutrition, uh, where we see metabolic syndrome X and diabetes, which is invariably associated with diminished immune function. So if you want to start treating immune function, at least in an indirect manner, you need to control these diseases, namely metabolic syndrome and diabetes. But clearly, we are somewhat preoccupied today with age, aging as such and need to talk about the issue of immune senescence. What happens with age are striking changes in immune status. You see reduced responses to vaccination and increased infection rates in the elderly. That's clearly documented in many epidemiological studies. 